What's going on everyone? This is Vance Apollo and I am back with another movie review. And today's review will be on the highly anticipated Deadpool 2. Now this is a follow-up to the first Deadpool movie in 2016 which was widely successful and was very critically acclaimed by the audience. It basically follows the events of the first Deadpool movie starring Ryan Reynolds. And with every movie review I've done so far, I'm going to go into the pros and the cons of this movie and give it a number rating out of 10. Also, I forgot and I feel like I don't really have to say it, but I kinda have to say it. I'm going to be spoiling this movie, so if you haven't seen Deadpool 2 yet, I suggest you pause it, do whatever, click out, click this window out, see the movie, and then come back to this video. So without any further ado, let's get into it with the pros. The first pro of this movie is that Zazie Beats was really good as Domino. For those that don't know, Domino in the comics is a uh, is a anti-hero or a hero for some people whose superpower is basically being able to be very lucky. And it was very interesting to see that character uh, come to realization because honestly, I think it's kind of a cheap way to do a hero, you know, have their power just be luck <laughs> in a sense. And But they made her really good and Zazie Beats played that character really good. Zazie Beats from Atlanta fame, if you don't already know. And what made it really good was that... Um, they had her, they had the one, the one sequence they had her where it showed how great her luck is and it showed her how her power works where it was just this whole sequence of something I'm going to get into later but how she gets to the convoy and and she's the only member to get to the convoy and like all this stuff happens around her but she's not getting hurt at all which I thought was amazing <laughs> and I just thought it was a really good way to show how lucky she is and when she's also fighting other people how unlucky they are. The second pro of this movie is that Josh Brolin played a really good cable. I feel like as in summer box office movie wise this is the summer of Josh Brolin in a sense because he's already been playing Thanos he now is going to be playing cable and I think in a couple of months or I don't re I don't remember when it's exactly coming out but he's going to be reprising his role in Sicario 2 and it, it's just gonna be a crazy summer for Josh Brolin honestly. To be honest when I first heard news that Josh Brolin was going to be playing Cable I wasn't too on board with it I was more on board with uh, Stephen Lang playing Cable but we got Josh Brolin and I thought he did a fantastic job playing the uh, futuristic old son of uh, Scott Summers and it was it was just a great portrayal of the character. The third pro of this movie was that the end was oddly surprisingly heartwarming. Again, spoilers, but in the third act, the team of Deadpool, Domino, and Cable go to the Essex House, which if people didn't know what the Essex House is, it's a hint to uh, the classic, classic X-Men villain, Mr. Sinister, but they didn't show him, so whatever. But <laughs> they go to the Essex house to stop uh, the young Russell, aka Firefist, from destroying that and getting his first kill, which would lead to the event of Cable's family being killed. And they had this big whole fight scene with an amazing song by, I think, like Lil Pump and French Montana was in charge of that for some strange reason. And they had, and at the end of it, where it was all coming to an end, Russell kind of burned Deadpool and like kind of got him off and because of what happened in the prison where Deadpool said oh I'm not your friend I'm not even trying to protect you blah 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 and Cable was going to go shoot Russell so he could save his future daughter and wife and then Deadpool jumps in front of Cable's bullet and takes a bullet where Deadpool can't die but he puts on the uh, power Defib defib defibrillator. He puts on the power like controller, and it, it, his cancer kind of just like starts coming back a hundredfold, tenfold, and like he starts dying. And like it was really heartwarming to see Deadpool take a bullet for this kid that he knew he could save. Like he knew he could save, and from the like weird vision quest that he went to with his dead girlfriend. Spoilers, dead girlfriend. Uh, Vanessa saying like kids make us better than we used to be and it, it, it was really like emotional and I didn't cry in it but I mean it was just really like a nice nice thing to see uh, that kind of emotional beat happen in the movie where where uh, Deadpool was just the lower Deadpool basically sacrificed himself to to save this kid from being a future monster 
And the next pro of this movie is that I thought Josh Brolin and Ryan Reynolds had great chemistry together. Now, I don't remember if they were in a movie before to start that chemistry, but when it seemed when they had scenes together and when they had like especially fight scenes and talking scenes it, 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 it seemed like those two characters got along really well and those two actors got along really well well to have that kind of chemistry where Cable was this tough grizzled uh, leader and Deadpool was this kind of jokester like it it, it like it was I, I was gonna almost compare it to something that it's not at all I mean it could be but it's not but I could go into another video but <laughs> the chemistry between those two was just really uh great to me honestly and the next pro is that the x-force scene was extremely funny the beginning of it where deadpool got out of that uh superhuman metahuman jail and he was going to weasel to start a x-force type of group well he didn't call it x-force but he started a super group to stop cable from killing russell and where he had the auditions and he had the people like Bill Skarsgård and Bill Skarsgård as Zeitgeist and Terry Crews as Bedlam and had all these people in it and he had the Vanisher which I thought was really funny and he just had uh, uh, Shatterstar which was also which was also extremely funny how he said he's from the planet Mojo and he's an alien and how <laughs> how what his superpower is is that he's basically better than him, I just was laughing the whole time where all that was happening, and then when it was something so when something so little like a wind advisory, where in other superhero movies that wouldn't be a concern, but in this superhero movie it was more than a concern. Oh, I totally forgot Peter was the star of that whole scene, but in 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 that airplane scene where they talk about a wind advisory, I talk about a whole wind advisory where. It, in in other superhero movies, it wouldn't be a concern, but in this one, it is a total concern because this is where this is where they get all the X Force members to go, and they're jumping out of their plane, and it's all this epic type of music. Deadpool lands first on this uh, billboard, and he sees he sees the rest of his team with Terry Crews's Bedlam, Zeitgeist. Uh, Shatterstar, uh, Zazie beats Domino, and the Vanisher, which I thought was funny, and then Peter with his mustache, I think it was played by Rob Delaney, if I'm not mistaken, and they were all just like kind of spinning out of control because of this whole wind advisory, and then they all subsequently die. I mean, except for Terry Crews' bedroom, because he just kind of crashed into a car, and, <laughs> I mean, crashed into a bus, and there were they were giving him CPR so he could still be very alive. But, I mean, the other guys are just 100% dead. The Zaikai is going through a whole wood chipper. Shattersaw getting his freaking hair, getting his freaking hair in his face and not seeing the, the, the medical helicopter about to slice him up. And the only one that can get to, the only one that is able to get to the convoy is Domino, which shows her power of luck. And I thought that that whole scene was great, and uh, and I felt so bad for Peter too, because Peter Peter was going to try to save Zeitgeist, who Zeitgeist uh, spits acidic, who not spits but vomits uh, acid, and then Peter just got the bad end of that stick and kind of got acid vomited all over him, and that was, ooh, that was kind of gruesome for Peter, and I felt. Real bad for Peter because he just saw a LinkedIn profile or a LinkedIn uh, thing and he just kind of was just like, yeah, I kind of just saw it. The other funny thing about it was that Dopender, the taxi driver in the first movie, was trying so hard to be a contract killer like Deadpool and he, and he wasn't getting it, he wasn't getting in, he wasn't getting it. But when Peter, just a normal whole guy, just a normal guy, Peter, was going to be... I uh, was going to it and he just said I just saw the ad for it and I thought it was interesting <laughs> Like when they said that Peter is in Dopin was just like no and <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sick and that made me just die <laughs> Honestly and the last pro of this movie which I honestly really loved is that they did a great job in not spoiling juggernaut in the trailers
are a bunch of summer movies out there, and I kind of, and I kind of get it. You want to get people to see the movie and all this other stuff, but there are a bunch of summer movies that were just like when, like this is why I try to stay away from trailers because when you watch the trailer, you will get spoiled on something that you didn't want spoiled, and that fans didn't want spoiled, and it's just like it, it doesn't become interesting anymore, but. Deadpool 2 did a fantastic job in not spoiling the real villain as Juggernaut. Like, they made, they really made you think that Cable was going to be the real whole villain, but in the trailers and everything like that. And it was kind of weird because in the comics and, uh, in the, well, really in the comics, you, Cable and Deadpool are really known for being partners as in X-Force, but him being a villain to Deadpool was... It could have been worked. It kind of, it really did work. And at first, we all thought, okay, he's gonna be this main villain. But then we saw the real villain as Juggernaut, and also sort of, kind of Russell. But like as Juggernaut, and they, and they didn't spoil it at all. They didn't show Juggernaut. They didn't show. I mean, and if they did, it was only for like a split, split second. So you really couldn't tell what it was. And the fight between Juggernaut and Colossus was such a fan, uh, what is it, what you call it, a fan appreciation moment because there is a comic, I forgot what comic it was, and I know somebody on the internet is going to correct me, but I forgot what comic it was, but where Colossus and Juggernaut are going head to head, and that's, and they showed that in real life, even though, not in real life, in the movie, even though it was a, just two CGI guys going at it. And and it kind of fan service. It was kind of just this big fan service to everybody who read those comics and read the cover of that Colossus Juggernaut comic. And the Juggernaut in this movie was really good. I mean, although it was played by Ryan Reynolds, who they just lowered, I think, lowered the tone of his voice and did different kind of lines for him. They made it seem they made they made Juggernaut a lot better because. It, before, the, the 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 juggernaut we had was just the bad one in X three, which, God, we don't want to remember those X Men movies, but this juggernaut actually looked like a whole juggernaut, and I'm I'm really glad they made it seem like he was not totally dead, because at the end of the whole film, where they're all walking away, you can see juggernaut, uh, trying to climb out of the pool like he's not totally dead, which I, I personally loved. But of course, to every yang, there's a yang, and so here are the cons of Deadpool 2. First con of this movie is that I really couldn't take the serious moments seriously. Look, I'll applaud Deadpool 2 for actually going there and taking and going for uh, serious moments, but like when it's kind of stuffed in the middle between like like joke and bed and joke and bed, and then like like stuffed into this weird joke serious lasagna thing, I couldn't take it as seriously because I'm thinking about the other jokes, I'm thinking about what's coming, or I'm kind of anticipating what's coming after that. And like, well, like a great, a great example is when um, they're all like one, like when they're all uh, just been beaten by a Juggernaut, and they're all at uh, Blind Al's apartment, and Cable is talking about his daughter and his wife, and he's talking to Deadpool about how uh, he. He would do the same thing if his dead girlfriend was asking for it and all that stuff. And and in the middle of it, and in the middle of it, like, you just see Deadpool shirt cocking it. And it's just weird because it's just like, you're trying to have a serious moment, but then you see having Deadpool with a Goonie shirt and baby legs and zero pants, which needed to be fixed immediately. And I was just like... I couldn't take the serious moment seriously because of these all of the jokes they had in it. <laughs> like that was weird for me. The second con of this movie is that it kind of had a boring third act to me. This is where I would say that Deadpool 2 is becoming like every other superhero movie and they think they're not becoming those superhero movies because I mean, it's not like a, they have a huge trash or whatever beam going up to the sky that's going to destroy the planet, but it kind of had like a like a copy and paste third act to me like there was that scene, it was all at the Essex house it was kind of you knew it was le this was leading up to everything and 
and it, it just like I saw this movie twice, and when it got to the third act, I was just kind of not tired, but I was just kind of like ah, whatever. Like I mean, I don't think it could have ended there. I could have ended at the sec at the second act, but I think it was just like it's kind of whatever. Like this, like the fighting was good, the uh, CGI fights was good, the fight be with uh, Deadpool and Cable against the uh, pedophile <laughs> cards was good. But like, and other than that emotional moment, it was just like, um, it's, I've seen it before, honestly, and I think it may be a problem on me, honestly, but I, it's just like, I, I've seen this whole thing before. I know how this is all going to end. The third con of this movie, and this is something personal for me, but I wanted more Terry Crews. In this movie, Terry Crews played the superhero Bedlam, who had one of the best powers in that movie by far, who could control electrical fields in the air and in your mind to where you can have anxiety or stress or any of this. And one, Terry Crews is just naturally big, so I just wanted to see him fight. And in the trailers, it seemed like he was going to get in the fight, but then they just kind of killed him off. And I was just like, damn, I wanted wanted way more of Terry Crews. Like, if it was Zazzy Beats' Domino, Terry Crews' Bedlam, Cable, and and Deadpool, and there wasn't Colossus in it, I would have been fine with that. I honestly would have been fine with that, but there wasn't, and I, I, I kind of was disappointed because, one, I've been following Terry Crews' Cruz's career, at least for some time now, and I think... He should he should have gotten more screen time. I mean, they did a great job not spoiling that Terry Crews was casted in this movie, but I wanted to see more of Terry Crews in this movie, and I and I hope I hope because technically we really don't know if Terry Crews is dead or Terry Crews's bedlam is dead because they were giving giving him CPR when they extracted him from the bus he crashed into, so he could still be alive and he could still be in the Deadpool three movie, but we really don't know, do we? So those are my personal pros and cons of Deadpool 2, so now it's time for my rating. Being the lowest, 10 being highest, yada yada yada, blah blah blah, you already know how it goes. I have to say, I enjoyed this movie. I did really like this movie. I didn't like it as much as the first Deadpool movie, but I still really did like this movie. And if I was to give it a score out of 10, I would, I would give it like an 8.2, and I don't, I don't know if the math is really correct on it but that's like a like a b minus and i know i know some math guy's gonna be out there to to correct me on it whatever i'm ready for it but you know like it's a, it's a solid b it's a b minus you know it's, it's good and i would suggest you go see it if you like the first one and if you like the character deadpool i suggest you go see it and, it, and it's really good acting and everything uh, but you know you know it, it's 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 it, it's not as good as the first Deadpool. I'm going to say that. It's not as good as the first Deadpool, but it is still really good. I thought that about wraps it up for this video, but I would love to know what you thought about this movie in the comment section down below. If you haven't watched my last video, then click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then click right here. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.